Dooley, you're on a roadie, mate. Why have you decided to drive around New Zealand? Well, I'm not home. Well, not home. I call it home, but I'm not in New Zealand um, much at all nowadays, Marty. I'm obviously living overseas, and I thought flying might be just a bit too much of a pain in the backside. And um, I've decided I'm going to grab a car from my good mates at Sixth and um, drive the country, or drive the North Island anyway, while we've got these Indian games on. So. I'm actually quietly looking forward to it as long as the weather plays its part. Okay, well, that's not going to happen, mate, because it's going to be shiting <laughs> down today. Okay, so you hammied the Tron down to Wellington, and then are you actually going to follow the whole tour? Are you going to go to Napier, going to drive up yep. to the Mount? Wellington to the Mount, Mount to Napier, Napier to Auckland, and then Auckland to Hamilton. So that'll be my that'll be my driving for the next 12 days, 13 days. Okay, so when's the last time that you actually did a roadie in New Zealand? Oh, uh, I would hate to think. I, I wouldn't honestly know. I've not driven to Wellington, I would say, in, I'm going to say 25, 30 years. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay, you're going to get a, a massively beautiful yeah. surprise because that nasty little coastal road around Pukakura Bay is, is all gone now, and you get Transmission Gully, which they were talking about for 100 years, and they finally built it. So that's the last bit into Wellington, which is fantastic. But one thing that you will notice, and which is all, you know, and you've got to drive carefully, mate, is that the roads haven't changed a hell of a lot here. It's still basically yeah. two lanes, a lot of the, like You drive all around the world, I know, and one of the frustrating things is that if we just had a, a double-lane motorway with a median strip between Auckland and Wellington, it'd probably take you five and half or six hours and you'd feel safe but it's the safety <laughs> yeah, thing mate exactly. that, that's it isn't it i mean and I, I'm, I'm used to now sort of driving seven lanes uh through abu dhabi to dubai and um and everything sort of works quite well but uh, hey look it, it's gonna be interesting i'll take it easy i'll hopefully not run into any of our friends in blue and uh, if i behave myself i shouldn't Simon Dahl is with us, 98 test wickets for our country. And, of course, is all over the world commentating cricket. Just came back from the T20 World Cup. Dooley, it feels weird, mate, that we're playing these now. They've kind of crept up on everyone. Yeah, they have, very much so. And I think, you know, if you go back to the last T20 World Cup, Marty, remember when we were in India two days or three days after that last T20 World Cup, we just had the heartbreak of losing that uh, final to Australia. And then... We played a, a T20 game in Vizag or somewhere, I think it was three days later. And so the problem for both these teams, and India probably slightly less so because they've got a lot more new players and players that didn't play any games at all in that T20 World Cup. So we have got to get ourselves up for these games. Now, you, people might be sitting and saying, well, you're playing for your country, you're playing against India. How, you know, surely you can get yourself up for that game. But it's not as easy as that sounds. And, and, Coming off the, the sort of the downer of losing that semi-final at a World Cup, four days later, sort of coming and having to play a, a bilateral series is not always easy. So India will be slightly more up for it, I think, than, than we will be. So we have to find a way. OK, as, as, are these ranking points? Because, you know, the other thing is, is that for uh, cricket fans, when you've watched a great tournament like that World Cup and then it's just us against another opponent, you kind of think, oh, OK, well, it just doesn't just doesn't carry anything. But these carry points, are they towards the next one? Do they This and also the uh, one day? The T20s don't. Uh, I think the... So what happens with the T20 internationals? The top eight teams, so the top four from each group automatically qualify for the uh, USA and West Indies, so we're fine with that. Uh, the one-day international, uh, definitely they will carry ranking points for the 50-over World Cup. So I think, again, I, I think we're OK with that, but um, they're still games that we, we want to win. Simon Dool is with us then. Guppy dropped uh, out of the, the team for, for both the, the, the T20s and the one-dayers. Uh, first and foremost, was that fair? And second, is, is there a way back for him or is that going to be the end of him at 198 one-dayers? Um, look, I understand the theory around Finn Allen. I, I, I got it and he proved, um, you know, they were proved right probably in that first game against uh, Australia. He didn't do much post that and my theory about Finn Allen has always been that he is very hit and miss and that's the way he's going to play what they probably wanted Martin to do more of is be the real aggressor we couldn't have two guys at the top in Finn Allen and Guppy if he wasn't really going hard at the ball opening the batting and then Kane batting at three it just was never ever going to work so I, I, can, I can get the theory around it we just we only got it delivered really in one game and a half against um, Ireland from, from Finn Allen. So is he sort of as good a player? Absolutely not. 
Uh, is he, has he already gone past Martin Guptill? Absolutely not. But do they see him as the future? Yes, I think they do. Um, is there a way back? I don't believe so. Uh, you know, they will say everything they, they can say to, to sort of maybe keep Martin hanging on. Uh, but I don't think there is a way back. And I think he honestly needs to go to New Zealand cricket now and say, look, guys, thanks very much. It's been great. Um, my contract, I'd like to get out of my contract now. And I'm going to go and, um, you know, I'm going to go and play cricket around the world. He would pick up a contract in a heartbeat in the South African or the uh, International T20 League in Dubai. He'll get a PSL contract comfortably. He'll be able to go to the 100. He'll be able to go to the Caribbean. And he'll be able to make, um, you know, make good money at the back end of his career, which he fully deserves after the service he's given to New Zealand cricket. Here, here. How many years do you think he's he's got if he does that? At least another couple? I haven't, I haven't actually... Googled his age, Marty. What is he? 35, 34? I'm going to be. I'll do that for you right now, pal. Yes, and I'll find I'm it. Do that while I'm talking, if you can. But yep. look, um, it, 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 from a batting point of view, in the leagues around the world, probably not the IPL. It's, it's you know because it's the toughest league, and and you do come up against world quality, world class bowlers time and time again. Um, but in the other leagues around the world, I think he could play till 37. Okay, he's 36, uh, mate. He turned 36 in September. So he's just turned 36. So I think he'd play 37, 38 comfortably. So he's easily got two more years yep. uh, of, of travelling the world and playing some cricket. And maybe if he's going well, um, you know, another year on top of that. So let's say two to three years comfortably. Kane Williamson let go by the Sunrisers. Uh, so he goes back into the auction or the draft, I suppose, if you're talking American sport. Uh, is that significant at all? And will he get picked up? Uh, look, I, I'm surprised that they've let him... Or not surprised they've let him go, sorry. I think they will maybe try and buy him back. But the, the sort of... The feeling I got from Kane's um, Instagram post is that they probably won't buy him back, which um, is, is a... Yeah, it's an interesting thing from the Sunrise. It's a big call. Uh, not not so much because of his batting ability or his batting at the moment. The way the way this year went was pretty poor. He hasn't had a great time of it in T20 cricket of late. So I can understand what they're trying to do. But as a captain, I thought they might look to buy him back. So will he get picked up? Someone may look at him. Another team may look at him not only as, um, well, not purely and simply as a captain and a, and a guy who will play in their first 11, but... Maybe just to talk to young captains, um, you know, does a, a Gujarat who have won the title, do they look at him and say, he'd be a great backup at the top of the order. He'd be a great sounding board for Hardik Pandya, who is a young captain. Um, you know, he's going to captain the T20 side here in India, in New Zealand, sorry, for India. So, it, look, there's a chance. Does he need it? Absolutely not. Um, is he a chance to get picked up? I, I'd say 50-50. Simon Jordan's with us. A couple more cricket questions to ask you as well. And whereabouts are you at the moment on the road? I'm only not. I'm not far out of Hamilton actually. I'm okay. just coming through Cambridge now oh, okay. on the beautiful expressway. Yeah, there you go, the expressway. Adam Milne is back. We spoke to him the other day, Dolly. And the crazy thing is, mate, he started playing cricket for us 2010, I think it was 2012, something like that. He's been around for yeah. so long, but he's hardly played. Yeah, it's a real worry for me. I mean, he just continually injured Adam Milne. And I mean, look, I know all about it. It is not easy. It's, it's a horrible thing to, to play your career with. Uh, I think he is, a, I find him a nervous character, um, an over-trainer, uh, a guy who basically just, I, I think he works too hard sometimes and puts too much pressure on himself. So I'd like to see him just relax. He's, he's you know, Again, he's another one that's uh, in his 30s now. And if he's going to play or have an extended run at international cricket, he just needs to, to find a way to do it and, and not train too hard, not put... I mean, I've seen him warming up in games or prior to games and just going over the top and, and almost injuring himself prior to games consistently rather than during games. So, um, you know, sometimes you've got to play through them. Some of them are too hard to play through. I get that. But sometimes you've got to play through injuries and sometimes you just have to figure out a way to, to get the job done. And, and he's at that point in his career now. Uh, you would have heard that um, both Cummins and Hales are pulled out of the T20 next year. Pat Cummins says, so this is the IPL, says that he wants to concentrate on the Ashes June and July and then the One Day World Cup after that. Did that surprise you? Not really. Um, I, I think he had been, he'd probably been given the nod that he was going to be released. 
Uh, he, he hasn't been a very good performer at T20 level. I wouldn't have had him. I said it throughout the tournament. I would have had, wouldn't have had him in my Australian T20 side. I would have played Kane Richardson throughout that tournament and not Pat Cummins. You look at their numbers, they are vastly, uh, or Cummins' numbers are vastly inferior to someone like Richardson. His 2020 is not his game. I think uh, Test match cricket, he's probably, well, he's one of the best in the world, in my opinion, in Test match cricket. And 50 over cricket, he's very, very good. But T20 is just not his go, and uh, I'm not surprised at all. I think it's uh, it's probably a friendly rem- a friendly call from Brendan McCullum or from uh, the, the Kolkata Knight Riders. People have said, listen, mate, we're going to trade Lockie back from uh, Gujarat, and we're probably going to let you go at the auction. So I'll leave it up to you. All right, then. Uh, Faf Duplessis, another topic. He's released a book called Faf Through Fire. He was, of course, South African captain in the infamous Sandpaper Gate Test Series. He's labelled... He, he said he's, he was uh, jealous of A.B. de Villiers and he's labelled David Warner a bully. I mean, OK, what do we think about these books? Because it used to be when a cricket player put out a book, it was basically ghostwritten by somebody else. And it was just sort of anecdotes and yarns about the dressing room yeah. and maybe maybe some stuff about some of the matches they played. These days, it's a bit more warts and all. I mean, this guy's talking about his relationships, his heartbreak, all the journey he's been through, all of this. It's a real kind of laid bare stuff, isn't it? But first and foremost, Warner a bully. Uh, you know, is it is it is it is it fair of him to actually accuse him of that in that book five years later? I suppose David Warner's got a chance when he writes his to turn around and slap back, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Look, I mean, I'm not surprised. I don't think anybody'd be surprised. He is a bully, and that's um, you know that's how he's played his game. And but you, you hear from anyone who's played with him, um, and they'll all say the right things at the time. But most of the people that have played with him or against him and teams will will say that. Um, you know, he's he's just that sort of character. He's a he's a sort of a front front up in your face type of character, and he will be seen as that type of player um, for many many years to come. I think it's it's no surprise to me at all. It's also what's got the best out of him. It's also made him, you know, what's made him one of the best in the world. And uh, and there's no doubt in my mind that he is one of the best in the world. So, yeah, you sort of we all play with different characters. As far as the books are concerned, Marty, if you don't bag your teammates or bag someone else or write something controversial, you're not going to sell a book nowadays. Everybody's heard the stories. Everybody's heard the sledges. Everybody's heard all the the huffy, fluffy, puffy stuff. If you don't write a book that bags a whole lot of people and and, um, sort of pour your heart out, then you're just not going to sell a book. And I think that's probably where where Fuff's at. I I like Fuff. I've got a lot of time for him. I think he's a a terrific human being and... um, you know, he's obviously been through a bit of stuff through his career. He was very jealous of, of A.B. de Villiers. I think there was, um, you know, South, what they go through in South Africa, really, it's, it's hard for anyone outside to understand. I think that's the biggest thing for me. If they had been able to play their best 11 at World Cups across the last 10 or 15, 20 years, I guarantee you they would have won a Cricket World Cup of wow. some sort, a 20 yeah. over or a 50 over World Cup. But they are not allowed to play their best 11 for reasons that you know we can't quite understand, but they they do, and so therefore they suffer the consequences of that. Finally, you're on your way down to Wellington, mate. Uh, uh, have a little excursion, drive around this thing in the kind of the as in the in the city. There's a Mount Vic tunnel. There's this thing called the Reserve. It's a bit of a basin. It's right in the middle. They used to play cricket there. It was quite a popular ground. Why the hell aren't we playing there instead of the Caketon, mate? The Caketon's the worst cricket ground in the country. It's not a cricket ground. Why the why? I just don't get this. You got a beautiful I cricket ground. Play no the idea. bastard there, mate. I have no idea. Why wouldn't you play at a packed basin reserve? What, I, I, it does not. It astounds me, Marty, that we continue to go back to that rubbish venue in the middle of a great city. I love Wellington, but it is a rubbish venue for cricket. It's a great venue for rugby test matches. I know they don't pour in there for you know for Wellington anymore. I know they don't pour in there too much for the Phoenix nowadays. But mate, it is it is a terrible, terrible cricket venue, and they should never play there. New Zealand cricket need their heads red. And I have no idea why they continue to do it and continue to put the people of Wellington who love their cricket and they've always been wonderful cricket supporters at the Basin, why they continue to put them through it.